A student produced this for UND's TV show, Studio One. The Red River Zoo in Fargo, North Dakota is home to nearly 90 different species from around the world. Two of them took a trip to join us in the studio today. Zoo Education Director Erica Prokerum is here to teach us how these animals defend themselves. Thanks for being on the show with us today, oh, Erica. My pleasure. So education is a big part of zoos. What exactly do you do to educate people about these animals? We actually do lots of things at the zoo. The education department is involved with helping develop signage for the zoo, uh, with developing summer camps and other classes at the zoo, also with taking animals off-site like we're doing today, and even choosing um, crafts and things to do at our special events. What are some of the best audiences that you've had for these presentations? That's a really hard choice. We, <laughs> we love them all. So, uh, but with small children, typically what we love about them is that they're willing and ready to listen to pretty much anything and everything, and they just get so excited. Um, with older audiences, we love the fact that they ask us really good, thoughtful questions. So all different kinds of people. Yes. Um, so our first animal here, can you tell me a little bit about him? Yep. <coughs> So this is a ball python, and they live in Africa. And uh, his cool defensive ability is actually that when he is scared, he can actually curl up in a ball with his head on the inside and protect himself that way. So it makes it a lot harder for anything to get at his head. And so he doesn't have a name. Why is that? So at the Red River Zoo, we um, don't always name our animals. It helps us remind us that they are wild animals and they are not pets. And also, you don't know if he's a boy or a girl. That is correct. What is the reason for that? So typically with snakes, um, the body parts for laying eggs are going to take up more space than um, the other body parts. Um, but with this particular snake, uh, his tail is kind of in between. It's not super skinny. It's not super fat. And we have to do an actual medical procedure to figure it out. And since we're not breeding him, uh, there's no point in uh, putting him through all that stress. So what exactly do you feed this ball python? So at the zoo, this guy actually gets fed uh, frozen mice. And that's for his health and safety. Uh, a lot of times when people think about predator and prey, they're like, oh, the poor bunnies, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but it turns out that that relationship is actually a two-way street, that uh, prey animals actually have a lot of defenses of their own. And uh, we wouldn't want him to get his eyes scratched or his fang knocked out by a live mouse. So what is the process that goes into feeding him then? Like, how does that work? Um, so at the Red River Zoo, um, one of the things we do for the safety of the handlers like myself is that the snakes are actually removed from their enclosures and put in a separate, a special enclosure that's very different, um, and they're fed in there, and that way they are not associating like food in their home. Um, and they're, they, uh, we wiggle a mouse in front of their face, and uh, it's a warmed up mouse from the frozen mouse. So. You bring him to lots of presentations and that kind of thing. Do you mm -hmm. ever have people that are just petrified of him in your audience? We do occasionally, and we know that if you're scared, if you're in a state of fear, you're not gonna learn a whole lot. So oftentimes when we bring a scary animal like this, or like say a tarantula, it's one of the first things we're gonna talk about uh, with our audience is the fact that this animal is not gonna be dangerous to anyone in the audience, um, and that they're actually a really cool animal, and then we learn a little about it. And then once you learn about it, they're a lot less scary. Okay, so can we switch animals then? Yeah. So this one, you said he has a few things in common. He's from Africa as well, and mm -hmm. he's a predator. Can you tell me a little bit about him? Yep. <laughs> so a lot of people think this guy is super cute. <laughs> he is. But it turns out he is a, a mighty predator. Uh, he <laughs> likes to eat um, bugs, and he'll even eat baby ball pythons. Oh. Uh, he also likes fruit. And so... <laughs> So he'll eat baby ball pythons. Is that dangerous to have them in the same enclosure, do you think? Um, but with these guys, um, that's pretty safe. Uh, this guy's not fed snakes on a regular basis, and they're kept in separate um, enclosures within the thing that we used to carry them around in. So He's pretty small. Approximately how much does he weigh? Uh, so he weighs, um, I don't know his exact weight, he's going to weigh about 16 ounces or so, about the same as a can of soup. And is that as big as they get? And this is a full-grown <laughs> adult. Yep, they're small and mighty. So what are his special adaptations to help him defend himself? So the most obvious, of course, are those spines you see all over his back. They're not on his belly or on his face. Um, but what he can do is if he feels threatened, he'll actually curl up in a tight little ball and tuck his face in, and it'll just look like a little ball of pins. <laughs> so, and those pins, the spines will actually stick straight out, too. What do um, hedgehogs eat in the wild versus in captivity? So at the Red River Zoo, this guy is fed mealworms and... Um, a special kibble diet, just like uh, similar to what a cat or a dog would eat, and then fresh fruit every day. And, um, in the wild, of course, they eat lots of different things. Like I said, they, they would also um, eat snails and slugs and that sort of thing, um, and even scorpions. Do they make good pets, or are they better off 
in a zoo or um, in the wild. So both the ball python and the hedgehog that you're seeing today were actually, were um, originally people's pets and they were unable to take care of them. The thing that people find oftentimes with exotic animals is that they are uh, very hard to take care of. They have lots of special needs, lots of things they uh, need to stay healthy and happy. And most people find that it's really challenging to be able to take care of that animal for the entirety of its lifespan. Um, the snake, for example, can live to be 20 years old. There's even some kinds of parrots that can live to be 80. And so we highly recommend um, before anyone gets any pet to make sure they can give it everything it needs for the entirety of its lifespan. Do you have a favorite animal at your zoo? Well, that's a tricky question. <laughs> we have different animals, the favorites for different things, but overall my favorite is the porcupines. And what do you like about him? Or they have, about them? They have <laughs> so many cool um, adaptations to help keep themselves safe. They're just kind of fun to look at and fun to watch. They kind of waddle when they walk and they can climb trees even though they look really ungainly. Um, and it's really fun to watch them eat too. They've got, they hold their food in their front paws and nibble at it. <laughs> so lastly, what's your favorite part of your job? Oh my goodness, I love the fact that I get to do a whole bunch of different things and talk about lots of, of different concepts and topics, uh, but it's all for the betterment of our planet. Great, thank you so much for being on the show with us today. You're welcome.